So this is Ted Hall. I'm here at the uh, Shabbat booth at the Bay Area Maker Fair, where tens of thousands of enthusiasts for making and doing things themselves are here to experience innovation and creativity. I've got uh, Ben Hecht here with me at the shop button. Ben is a well-known hacker, fabber, modder, and star of the Ben Hecht Show, an interesting internet TV program that's sponsored by Element 14. Most importantly, Ben is also a shop buyer, and he's been using shop bots in his projects. What do you think about it? Well, uh, I actually ran into you guys first at Maker Fair. It was here last year in San Mateo, then I also bothered you guys in New York. Because I was really interested in it, I wanted to get all the details, but then I uh, finally pulled the trigger on one, and I've been, I've had no complaints. I've been very happy with it. So what have you been using ShopBots for, Ben? Well, um, I typically uh, make enclosures and uh, cases for my projects. So I, I brought a lot of PVC, PVC plastic with it, and also um, I've been building pinball machines, so plywood as well. How did you get into this stuff? Into modding? Modding, yeah. uh, Years and years ago, I started modding Atari 2600 video game consoles. And I was a graphic artist back then, so I had you know a vector and art you know background. So I understood what the CNC machines were capable of. So I started doing it at work back then, and then uh, several years later, I'm you know doing it myself full time. But then I wanted to get my own large machines. So that's when I uh, got into Shopbot. With your skills, why didn't you just build one? Okay, well, um, the reason I chose to get a shop bot was, you know, you know, as a company, you provide the service, so it's your responsibility to make sure it's working well. Uh, when you do things as a business, like I do, you you don't really have the luxury of time to, as a hobby, okay, if you're, one, if you're a hobbyist, yeah, okay, I'll spend like, you know, a year tinkering this in my garage, but I'm like, I want this machine, I know what it does, it's a commodity item, I buy it, I hook it up, it works. And that was the big, the big decision, and not just the hardware side of it, but the software side. You know, quite often, if you make your own machine, then you've got to get a uh, G-code generator program, which you know can cost money or either not be good. And you, then you need a program to run it, like Mach 3. But then you've got other things where you got to hook up your parallel port, and then you're direct driving the TTL levels off that, which is kind of. Weird. But you know, one thing besides besides the reasonable price point that you had, I was impressed that you know you get the, um, the vector. Uh, the, the software that you put all the vectors in, there's like 3D and 3D. I thought that was awesome. I just take my AI files right into that. It generates the, well, I know it's not G code, but it generates the shot bot code. And then there's another program that actually sends it to the machine. But it's a complete package. You don't have to think about it. You just install those two programs, bam, done. That's, that's what I liked about it. Because, yeah, does that make sense? That it's, makes it, sense. If you're doing, of course. But that's what I tell people. Like, if, if you're doing this, for a business or to make money, it's nice to have a simple solution that just works, plug and play, so to speak. I mean, you do have to spend a lot of time leveling the machine when you put together the big one. But aside from that, it's pretty easy. And I haven't had any maintenance issues. I mean, it's not that old, but I haven't had any maintenance issues. So, uh, there are lots of families and kids here at the Maker Fair excited about everything they're seeing. What do you think we can do to help get kids excited about making and fabbing and understanding the science? Well, um, I, this fair is obviously a great resource for that. Like, unfortunately, you know, there's not that many of these. I mean, they're around the country, but it's fairly limited. Um, but well, I guess we talked about this in the education panel yesterday. Um, the thing that's good about making in general is the kids can, you know, mix it with their hands and they see a result. Like over there, you've got them putting together those objects. Like they can put it together and like, oh look, these pieces became an object. You know, they can get like the basic building blocks of engineering. And now I know there's like Legos and stuff and whatnot, but um, you know, some of that Lego stuff, it's kind of the design's already been predetermined for you. So I think just hands-on experiment experience and you know, if the parents encourage the kids to be interested in it, uh, that helped. I mean, certainly we've got that culture here. And the kids are all very well behaved here. Too. You notice that? <laughs> <laughs> it's geek Basically. upbringing. Uh, it must be. What do you think about the, all of the innovation and excitement of maker stuff that we see around now? The new maker movement, people getting into fabric. Do you think that'll have any impact on general manufacturing, production, bringing that sort of stuff back to America? Well, I certainly have an opinion on that. Um, you know, right now we still have a uh, employment. I don't want to know. Prices, well, price, it's still rough. I mean, it's, it's. I mean, I, I saw your newspaper today, like 12% this year. That's even worse than the national average. Okay, my, 
point is, you know, I started out, yeah, I working for the man. Well, you still always work for the man, but um, but then I struck out on my own because I was able to support myself. So I guess what I'm getting at is, if there are people out there that maybe uh, maybe the traditional workforce has let them down, if they have skills and that they can use the internet, which is a great a great resource, if they can provide a service that other people need, no matter how bad things get, always somebody always needs something. And if you can build it for them, and if you can use the internet as a resource to provide that for them, like, oh, I need this, okay, I can build it for you. Synergy, right? And then you can make some money. And then, yeah, I, at first you can't make as much. I mean, I when I first started working for myself, I didn't make nearly as much as I did as a graphic artist. But then once you work through it, you know, you know, keep building, keep innovating, now I make a lot more, like significantly more. What's your next project? Uh, for myself, we're building a uh, pinball machine based off Nikola Tesla versus Thomas Edison, like a steampunk. The what? Nikola Tesla versus uh, Thomas uh, Edison, uh, uh, the war of the current pinball machine. Uh, then we're continuing working on our show. We have six more episodes this season, then uh, we have another season. I haven't even thought about that yet. But. Uh, yes, yeah, so that takes up a good amount of my time, but I've actually, uh, I actually do prototype engineering. I've actually got a product going into Walmart now, and the prototypes I made on that. Yay! That's, oh, I thought you were just that a secret? Can you tell us that? Oh, I don't care. What is it? Uh, it's a, uh, it's called Cellivision. It, um, I think it's for, uh, <laughs> Nexus and Centro, and uh, it's just this, this device, and we, man, we did a lot of prototypes. But you know, we, we did, I actually did a double-sided rocket machine. You can actually do it when you clamp it and go backwards. And uh, I didn't even do it in 3D. I did it with like just multiple tool paths in 2D. But I was able to make it work. And I, I didn't. Well, you've got uh, what? I just your, your thing here. Yep. I use I use PVC. Use, well, I, I like it. Yeah. Again, mid, I've got Midland Plastics like blocking Well, you like the urethane for carbon when you start getting into. Yeah, the yeah. I, 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 what I'd like to do next with your machine or my machine or whatever is um carve some pinball ramps, you know, the classic ramps and stuff, but use the machine to carve the positive of it and then vacuum form over it. I think that would be a, a cool solution. So that's what I hope to do next. And I'm trying to get my shop neighbor, he's got, uh, I don't know what brand it is, it's like two or $3,000 HDPE um, CNC kit. Uh -huh. And I think he's looking to upgrade. So I'm like, dude, roll a buddy right off the pallet. Exactly. So exactly. I'm, I'm putting the bug in his ear. It's great. Thanks for coming by and chatting with us. No problem. Have a good show. You too.